In this video series, we've been talking about the science of reading and how that fits in within Be Glad and the strategies we use here. So far, we've discussed what the science of reading is and what it isn't. We've discussed phonological awareness and more specifically phonemic awareness. And we've talked about how to embed phonics practice into a variety of strategies. Now let's move into fluency. Fluency is comprised of three principal elements. The first is accuracy. We want students to be able to see a word and accurately read what that word says. When we build fluency within GLAD, we can work on fluency in a couple of different ways. One is automatic word recognition. Input charts are a great place to focus on this, where we're having students look for words on the input chart and match them with a word card. If you're doing this word card review with a narrative, the printed word is not on the narrative itself, but students still need to read that word on the word card and match it to a particular picture or area on the narrative. We want students' cognitive focus to be on what the text says and the meaning behind the text, not on what a particular word is. We want students to move away from reading words by individual sounds or even chunks to automatically recognizing what that word is as soon as they see it. Our brains are drawn to text. This is why billboards are effective. When we're driving down the highway, we see a billboard and it has words. We recognize those words instantaneously. We want students to be able to recognize words quickly and automatically so they can move towards comprehension. Fluency focuses on the two big strands in Scarborough's reading rope. It's related both to word recognition, where students are automatically recognizing words, as well as language comprehension. The second is rate. We want students to be able to read at a natural pace about matched to the rate at which we speak. If students are not reading at a rate in which language can naturally come into our brain and be understood, it becomes difficult to comprehend. If the words are too slow, it's difficult to understand what's being said. Similarly, if the text or the words come too quickly, it's difficult to understand. There is a rate at which we comprehend language easily and it's typically about the rate at which we speak. Now, we can read silently faster than that, but as students are reading aloud, we want them to be able to read at a specific rate with high accuracy in order to understand what that text says. And the third is prosody. Prosody refers to the rhythm and intonation of reading. We want students to add in expression as they read. This is modeled by the teacher as they do a read aloud, for example, in the big book. Which words we emphasize in a particular sentence is going to make a big difference in terms of what that sentence means. For example, if I say the words, I am tired, I might change the emphasis to change the meaning. I am tired. I am tired. I am tired. Each of those sentences, while having the same words, has a different emphasis on a particular word and changes the meaning ever so slightly. So as students are practicing reading, they need to one, read accurately, make sure they're reading the correct words, read at a rate which is natural, and emphasize and chunk together words so that the text makes sense. Other strategies that we utilize to build fluency include poetry and chants and songs. We build repeated reading of our poems that are up hanging around the wall to build fluency with students. They begin by reciting, singing, chanting the song, the poem, and build recognition of the words over time. Because they've read the poem multiple times, they're building fluency along the way. Later, they'll get a poetry booklet that has all of the poems embedded in it so they have their own copy. They can then practice reading skills by looking at that familiar text that they have built some recognition of and automaticity with. You're likely familiar with the cooperative strip paragraph and the process of building that paragraph with students. Once we built that paragraph, we engage in a process of reading and rereading the paragraph with emergent readers. The students read the paragraph and rebuild it sentence by sentence. They then read it again and rebuild the paragraph phrase by phrase. 
They then read the paragraph again and rebuild it word by word. They're reading the paragraph multiple times over and over again. This practice builds fluency with that particular paragraph, with that particular text. Later, students get a typed copy and they can read that text to other students in the class, to teachers, to parents, to family members, to people in the community. In each case, they're repeatedly reading the same piece of text in order to build fluency. That is how we can weave fluency into our instruction. Through the use of our strategies, we're intentionally helping students to recognize individual words and practice reading complex grade level text that's based on the content that they're studying.